Hi everyone, in this video we will change this program such that we create an array that can hold uh, the values that were entered by the user and then we are able to display each value that was entered by the user and not only the last value. So when we are working with just one variable like this, any entry that was entered by the user is, is lost except for the last value. So if I see out uh, the content of user entry uh, you'll notice that it will only be the last value so I'll just show you so this is basically uh, if I were to enter the same values that I've got in here so 2.2, 3.3, 4.4 4 and 5.5 .5. it will only remember the last value how do we keep a record of these first values as well that's when we can make use of arrays so an array is basically a container that can hold multiple values and each value is stored at an index so usually they all start with index 0 and increment by 1 so I'll um, I'll show you so it depends on the data type so if you want this array to be holding values of double, the array has to be of type double. So it's pretty easy, I'm just going to show you how to convert this program such that it can um, accommodate arrays. So what I'm going to do is create an array of this size which is 4 and this could be any number, so let's just work with that. So to, in to indicate that my variable is actually an array, so we use this square brackets like so. And so every time we are referencing or um, we are referring to user entry, it now has to work with the index as well. So right now what we did is we created an array of four elements and there's no value in them yet. Okay, but now what we do is we loop through each one, uh, through, uh, we have a for loop that loops from 0 to 4 and then when we ask the user to enter the value, instead of storing it in just a single variable, now it will be stored in the array at that index which we want index 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 so we need to change this to counter okay so suppose I put in the value 2 that goes in index 0 the next round it will be value 3 for example so that will be stored at index 1 and when I'm doing the sum as well I need to also refer to the counter so the first time it will do 2 plus 3 plus for example 4 and 5 and so our average would be 14. Um, I also want to mention that this statement can be also written in a shorter version so instead of doing sum like this I could just add the plus sign and this pretty much means the same thing so it means sum plus itself plus this value. So that's just, just a shortcut try it and see how it works I don't want this anymore but uh, yeah, so let's run the program and we should be getting similar results, exactly same results, but now we can actually access each index of the array and access all of the previous value that we have entered. So two, three, four, and five, and we have 3.5, good. So what can we do with this information? We can also access each number now by referring to its index. So I could basically um, do C out and I could refer to uh, the array the user entry and I could say for example I want to display number f uh, the number at index 2 so we, ha we can have that uh, let's give it a moment so 2, 3, 4, 5 the index at 2 is 4 so 0, 1, 2 because we said arrays are indexed from 0. Okay, now uh, we can also use a for loop to um, display all of the values. So I will just copy this for loop. And now what I can do is display the results. So I can say, uh, I can pr pretty much copy this and just change a few things. So I can say the, the value of number, I can't spell anymore, 
um, is, and now I can just specify the value. Oh, where was I? Okay. And I could also have a an end line after each one. Okay. All right. So that's it. I might want to have an end line there just to make it. Oh, God. Nobody saw that. Did you? Okay. So everything else can remain the same. But what you want to do with the values, that really depends on your program. But for now, I'm just showing you how you can actually display each item in your array. So two, three, four, five. And now it's just going to print them, which are exactly the same as what we've entered. And we've still got our average working as expected. So this is it. We've just changed our program such that now it can hold memory of each number that we've entered. And you can do now all sorts of things like finding the highest number, finding the lowest and doing more statistics as required by your work. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.